Good afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Welcome to the second edition of the BRSN Extra. I'm Sports Information Director Josh Pound. Coming up on this edition of the BRSN Insider, we'll visit with Head Coach Ryan Moody here in just a couple minutes, and we'll wrap up the 2014-15 regular season for both basketball programs. Take a look at our national qualifiers for the men's and women's track team as well as the wrestling team. But first up, uh, glad to have Coach Moody with us here this, this morning. And, and uh, you know, Coach, a strong finish to your season uh, this last week, two wins. Uh, first off on senior night, you get a win over Culver Stockton here at home. And then you go down, and as we've talked frequently in the month of February, road wins in this conference are, are few and far between in the month of February across the board for a lot of teams. But to go down and be able to beat Evangel uh, to wrap up the season and then and seal up that number two uh, seeding for the conference tournament's a pretty big end of the season for you. Yeah, it was a huge week for us. Uh, the guys played tremendous on senior night. I have to give a lot of credit to our, our seniors. Uh, John Anaquay, Brett Fisher, Luke Norville, Jalen Messersmith, Dean Tewald, Raphael Sarikas, and our manager Nick Hercules. I mean, all these guys have invested so much time in this program. And what a special night. I mean, uh, great crowd, amazing crowd against a really good opponent in Culver Stockton and, and the guys just absolutely came out uh, with a ton of t energy and intensity and I thought we played great. Uh, made a lot of plays, knocked in some threes which makes the game a lot easier. Uh, more importantly in both those games though, going back to what you said about a great week, uh, we defended and, and we got back to kind of defending the way that we're used to, making it really hard for our opponent to score easy buckets and, and I think that was the difference last week. Well you talked about your seniors and obviously um, fourth year in the program for you is this senior group is, is the really is this the class you consider to be your first class I know that kind of you came in during the recruiting process when you were hired yeah no this is our first group I mean uh, two guys had committed and Dean Tewald and Luke Norville so we kind of had to re-recruit re them and make sure they were still going to come after the coaching change and then we went out and just got to work on guys like Jalen and Jonathan and uh, Brett Fisher Raf transferred in the next year and uh, it's a special group you know we, we talk a lot about in our program, uh, seniors leaving the program better than they got it. And this group has done that without a doubt. Uh, you know, they've, they've had the opportunity, if we can win one more game this year, to win more games every year they've been here. And, and that's a special feat. Uh, I've taken us to the national tournament now two times. Um, there's a lot of help from those other classes, but this group definitely set the tone foundation-wise for, for the culture of our program. And, and we appreciate it, meaning our staff and, and our fans really appreciate what they've done. Hopefully we're not done. <laughs> well, you know, before we, we take a look at what's coming up this week, you know, Evangel, again, to come up and, and be able to pick up a, not just a road win on Saturday, but a season sweep over Evangel again. Just talk about what that means for the program and the momentum that gives you going into tournament play. Well, I mean, just the, the fact that we go down there in the last game of the year with a chance to absolutely seal our fate and, and, and guarantee us a spot in the national tournament. It's a huge game. It's their senior night. They're, they've won the league outright going into the last week. Um, you got player of the year and core artillery. I mean, just a, a, a huge challenge. And I thought our guys responded just, just fantastic. I mean, we stuck together. Uh, we grinded out a win, really defended. I think we used our depth. They were excited to play. They were having fun out there. And, and that's, that's the best part of, you know, February and early March. March Madness, you know, is, is those big games. And that was a big game and the guys performed. So, yeah, it means a lot to sweep, I and mean, we take any sweep. Uh, but when you get a chance to sweep the, the team that won the league, I think that maybe means a little bit more and hopefully sets us up. I mean, the big thing with that week is, are we moving forward? Did we get a little better, and are we taking some momentum into the postseason? So we're hoping we are. Well, we'll take a quick break, and after that, we'll visit with Coach Moody about the all-conference selections and take a look at the final conference standings and a look at this week's Heart of America Athletic Conference Men's Postseason Tournament. Again, we're, we're speaking with head coach Ryan Moody, and coach, 
uh, you got together on Sunday. You guys don't actually physically go meet anymore as, as conference coaches as the technology allows you not to have to go meet in one place. But Sunday evening, the release of the all-conference team, you get three guys on that all-conference team and John Harris Jr., Jalen Messersmith, and, and Jonathan Anikway. And just talk you know, a little bit about what that means for the program and, and where it is this season to be able to place those three on the team. Well, I mean, I think that having having three players in the top 25 in the league essentially you know our, our league's a little different our, our top three teams are only five players and that's a pretty special award to be one of the top five top 10 or top 15 players and then our honorable mention is only 10 so you're essentially one of the top 25 players in the league and to have three up there when our leading scorer only has 13 points a game i think that's a really huge credit to our style of play i think it's a big credit to these guys and their individual work of trying to become a better player but also to their teammates. I mean, we share the ball. We believe in defense, and I um, um, think that the league and the coaches in the league recognize that, and, I, and it's reflected in the awards. Um, these guys have had a great year. Uh, John Harris is our leader at the point guard position and, and affects the game on both ends of the court, both defensively and offensively. Jalen Messersmith, two-time defensive player of the year. That's easy. You know, I mean, he's <laughs> his ability to to block shots and his motor um, are are just one of the tops in the country. And then Anikwe. Uh, you know, has been just such a steady, steady player for us from the day he got here. And uh, I'm glad he got some recognition because he's a huge part of what we do. So really happy for those guys. But I think they'd be the first ones to tell you that that doesn't happen without their teammates and the way they're pushed in practice every day and the way that our team believes in sharing the ball and unselfish play. So I'm happy for, for the whole team and those three guys. Well, before we get into the conference tournament, just take us through that process. You know, you're the chair this year. Um, how does it work? I mean, how does the process go to select the all-conference That's team? a good question. Uh, each, each coach gets a 20-person ballot. Um, you put the number one person that you think is the number one player in the league at the one spot, um, and then that person gets 20 points, and the two spot gets 19 points, and so on and so forth. So then we add up and tally them up. Uh, Corey Tillery was the person with the most points at the end of the day and was named Player of the Year from Evangel. Congratulations to him. And then we take the top five or the top five and, you know, the second five or the second team and so on and so forth. So defensive player of the year is a separate category voted on by the coaches. So we nominate a player um, for that. And newcomer of the year and freshman of the year are the highest point totals in those two categories. So uh, I think it's a pretty good system. You know, it wouldn't surprise me as we move forward uh, with adding teams to our league that we increase our all-conference teams a little bit. But uh, for this year, um, we're still at the five, and, and there's some really good players in our league, so uh, happy to get those three guys recognized. Well, the Heart of America postseason tournament gets underway this week. As we mentioned in the first segment, you guys are the number two seed, so you're waiting uh, to hear to see who you'll get to play in the quarterfinals. But that conference standings, when you take a look at them, as you can see on your screen right now, you know, it, not only did it not just come down to that final game of the season, we needed tiebreakers when, when the dust settled on Saturday night. Yeah, that's why that game over Evangel was so huge because uh, the first tiebreaker is head-to-head, -head, um, and both uh, Missouri Valley and us are sitting at uh, uh, tied in the league. And so now, because of that tiebreaker, we, the tiebreaker was Evangel. You know, you go to the, the number one team in the league, and what did you do against them? Missouri Valley split. We were able to get the sweep. So that gives us the two seed in the tournament, which is fantastic for multiple reasons. Number one, you host at least the first two games. And if, uh, if for some reason Evangel's still playing at the end, you're going to go there. But if they're not, you're going to host at the end as well because uh, top seed hosts. And then secondly, the two seed secures the national tournament bid. And I was confident that we would get in with our body of work over the course of the season anyways, but uh, excited that we have that knocked down. So now we can just settle in and maybe have a little fun in the postseason. Well, you see at the, at the bottom of there, we mentioned three teams from the conference do get automatic bids into the, the, the Buffalo Funds NEA Division I tournament. Talk a little bit about how that, I mean, obviously you've just mentioned the two seed gets in, so then that means Evangel is the one, the regular season gets the champ. How's that third seed then determined? That's a determined? good question. Well, actually, here's how it works. Uh, the, the number one seed out of our league goes to the, the, the tournament champion. That's the, that's the number one, so that one hasn't been decided yet. The second automatic bid goes to the next best finishing team. So if one doesn't win the tournament, two would get the next bid. If anybody else besides one wins the tournament, one gets the bid. Then we also have a host bid in our league at this time because the, the tournament is in Kansas City. The next best team in league would win, get that bid. Well, there you have it. There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. 
desire still drives. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Build character for life at championsofcharacter.org. Welcome back to the third and final segment here on the BRS and Insider this week. Again, now joined by Victor McDowell, the beat writer for the track program and the softball team here on the BC circuit. So we'll go ahead and, as we mentioned, we'll call you our BRS and Insider as we did last week. But, uh, you know, the regular season is officially over for every winter sport now as the basketball teams are getting ready for their conference tournaments. Track program has already taken off. They're headed off to Geneva, Ohio to take on the national tournament field. We'll just talk, let's give you a little bit of time to talk about uh, the number of qualifiers and what events possibly that they're going into this week. Well, we sent 12 qualifiers to the national, uh, national uh, NAI Nationals uh, indoor track and field as the first time in the history of the school. Actually, it's the best group that uh, Coach Darren Smith said that he has taken uh, to Geneva, Ohio. They actually made a stop in uh, Peoria, Illinois last night um, in order to get their 17 hour drive underway. But um, their main concerns this week are probably gonna be in the high jump with Jake, uh, Jacob Keneally, um, their mid distance crew that returns from the uh, NAIA uh, qualifying nationals for uh, cross country will be headlined by um, a junior, I'm sorry, Catherine Dillard, as well as uh, Nina Smart, uh, Hannah Wandra, and Lauren Benzing. So that's be probably one of their stronger groups heading into the weekend. Um, they start Thursday with the uh, distance, uh, distance medley relays and then they continue on through the, uh, the rest of the events to uh, Sunday. Well, I know I talked with Coach Lane at the scholarship ball on Saturday night, and I know some concern going into the Nationals this year is all of those uh, distances mm -hmm. that the team is going to put up on the women's side of thing. You've got Laura Benzing and uh, Catherine Dillard mm -hmm. running individual mm -hmm. events as mm -hmm. well as mm -hmm. the DMR and right. the 4x8. So that's you know essentially what happened last week. He was telling me in the conference tournament was he ran the number two teams in the DMR mm -hmm. and the four by eights and Benedict and still earned conference championships right, right. in both of those events. But on that note, we've also got three young men headed to Topeka, Kansas here on Friday and Saturday to participate in this year's NEIA wrestling championships. So we'll take a look at those three young men right now. First off, we have Gabe Sadoff. He'll be at 174 pounds. It'll be his first trip to the NEIs. He earned an at-large berth in the Central Regional where he took fifth place. Ethan Urock is gonna be wrestling once again at 184 pounds. He wrestled at 184 pounds last year as well, and he is making his second trip looking to expand on, he just wrestled in two matches last year, so yeah. looking to improve on that standing. And then finally, Steven Loosebrock at 197 pounds, making his third trip to nationals and that is quite a big feat considering this is the third time, their third season for this program to even be in existence. And he is one of 44 NEI All-Americans returning to this year's national tournament. This is the second year that he is wrestling at 197 pounds. As far as the rest of our spring sports go, uh, Mother Nature was nice to us this weekend. She didn't dump a ton of snow on us. So uh, unfortunately, the softball team Still not able to play at home, so their game here early in the week against Ottawa was moved to Ottawa's campus. They're still looking to possibly host Park University at the end of the week. And then, of course, this weekend we have a doubleheader for the Raven baseball team out at Olsen Stadium that at this point looks to be still scheduled as well. So for all the latest news and notes on what's going around in and around Raven Athletics, please visit www.ravenathletics.com. For Victor McDowell, I'm Josh Pound, the rest of the BRSN crew. Thank you for watching this edition of the BRSN Insider.